All right, so next up, we are going into the purple cards of OPO5, like we did for the previous few videos. Um, this is a crudely translated version of the Japanese website because the English site, sorry, for the Asia website that usually has the English translations, it's not up yet during the time of recording. But we'll make do if we have any translations we need to refer to. The people over on the Discord already translated every single card. So shout out to the trans latest over on discord but now we're going to go to the purple cards i'm not talking about the purple leaders because i already talked about it if you want to watch it it's in a different video on the channel but let's start with uso hachi three cost four thousand power with counter two thousand so you know it's going to be good because it's a two thousand counter it's funny how the trade is gang of straw it's a straw head crew and dawn one when attacking if you have eight or more dawn cards on your field put up to one of your opponent's characters with a cost of four or less into rest so this uh, beside being like a 2k counter, does have a little utility um, if you are attacking with Usopp or Usohachi, then you can rest a blocker, for example, like a 4 cost Marco the Phoenix, you can rest uh, you know, the 3 cost Do Flamingo blocker. So there are situations where you would want to play it out and attack with it with Don 1 attached to uh, Usopp, but other than that, it's a 2k counter, so it's a 2k counter utility, so that's good. Alright, next up is Onami. 1 cost 1000 power, you counter 1000. If you have 10 Dawn on your field, this character gets blocker. So yeah, this is one of those situational blockers. I feel very strongly about situational blockers that I feel like they're not good. So don't need to play this. You might as well just play a 2 cost blocker. Yeah, I don't I don't see this being played at all. It will be overlooked. So let's move on to Orobi, the, you know, the best one. 4 cost 5000 power, you counter 1000. Uh, on play, if you have 8 or more Dawn in your field, KO up to one of your opponent's characters with a cost of 3 or less. This does have a place in the meta game. This does uh, really, really good things because with purple decks, you are ramping very, very fast um, with purple Luffy or even like the red purple Luffy or even like some other purple base decks that have like great ramp. So then you can just play uh, Robin or Robbie. Uh, and if you have 8 or more Dawn, you just KO something that's 3 or less. And it's a 4 cost 5,000 power character, so you know the stat line is great. This is a playable card. Definitely gonna see play in purple list moving forward. So now let's move on to Killer. It's a 1 cost 2,000 power, you counter 1,000. And it's a searcher, it's an on-play searcher that looks at the top 5 cards of your deck. Reveal 1 card with the trait uh, Kid Pirates other than Killer, and add it to your hand. And then place the rest on the bottom of your deck in any order. So this is good if you're playing a dedicated uh, kit leader, like purple, red, useless kit from ST10. You can use killer to look for the five cost useless kit, the seven cost useless kit, all of them really, really powerful cards. So yeah, in a dedicated kit pirates, purple base shell, this would be a great staple for that. All right, Sangoro, six cost 8,000 power with counter 1,000. First of all, artwork goes really hard. It's that moment in the Wano arc, you all know which one. And it's a vanilla. So you can definitely play this out. I feel like Purple Luffy will play Sangoro because you can ramp up. If you're going first, you can ramp up to six very easily and then just play this guy out on the turn that you ramp with his ability. That's great. Next up, we got Jinbei. Five cost, 6,000 power with counter 1,000. It has blocker. And during your opponent's turn, if you have 10 Dawn cards on the field, this character gets plus 1,000 power. So it could potentially be a 5 cost 7,000 power blocker, which is great for blocking you know, some of the bigger attacks out there. Yeah, this could be, this is a playable card. Uh, definitely a mid-range blocker. We've seen a few of these. Um, and whether you want to replace this versus the 5 cost super rare user skit, which we'll talk about, which I think is better, and versus Queen. Yeah, you got to make that decision. Maybe you want to play just all Straw Hat Pirates then. This will be your guy. Next is Zora Juro. First of all, artwork, just mirroring the uh, Sanji card that we saw earlier. Great. 3 cost 4,000 power with counter 1,000. Uh, when attacking, if you have 3 or less life, add up to 1 Dawn card from your, from your deck while active. So this is a great way to ramp, especially when you're playing like Red Purple Luffy because you already start at 3 life. But also with Purple Luffy because you are ramping and this is just additional ramp for you. And the great thing about Purple Luffy is that it, Trick, like you can use it when you are at 2 dawn, you take 1 life, and then you are at uh, 3 dawn, you can play this out, and then immediately start ramping once you are 3 life or less. So this card, definitely playable. I'm excited to see how many copies uh, Zoro will be, uh, well, playable players will have in their deck. So that's great. 
<laughs> Next, we have Chopper. Two cards, 3,000 power, one counter, 1,000. Uh, on play, if you have eight or more Dawn cards on your field, activate up to, uh, restand up to one of your uh, characters with the Straw Hat Pirates, one of your purple characters with power 6,000 or less. So you can, you know, um, attack with Zoro, ramp one, and then you can restand it with Chopper if you have eight or more Dawn. And attack again with Zoro if you want to ramp up to like 10 or something. But there are other cases you can use this to attack with Jinbei again. Um, would be useful. I don't think that that's the kind of strat that Purple wants to go for. Because they'd rather just play all the bigger stuff uh, that currently is in Purple. Like the 10 core Super Rare and all that. Um, but yeah, this would be really, really good in that regard. Uh, next up, we got Trafalgar Law. 3 cost, 5,000 power, no counter, but on attack, uh, when attacking, if the number of Dawn cards on your opponent's field is greater than the number of Dawn cards on your field, look at the top 5 cards of your deck, pick one card with the Heart Pirates trait, uh, and then add it to your hand and put the rest at the bottom of your deck in any order. This is so good in Red Purple Law because you are Dawn minusing 3 with uh, the SC10 Red Purple Law's ability, and then you attack with Trafalgar Law, you get to search, and then you can, you know, refill your hand or you can play out you know the deck uses a lot of hard pirates card like beppo um, jean bart and also penguin and shachi so this is perfect in the deck because you get to get more cards when attacking this is definitely a staple for that law deck specifically but if you're using like the hard pirates engine in other purple decks you can use this law as well Next up is Frenosuke, 5 cost, 4,000 power, but with counter 2,000. Dawn 1, if you have 8 or more Dawn on your field, this character gains Rush. I feel like this is great. Uh, it's a 2k counter, but with utility, and if you need to, you uh, for an additional attacker, you can just put a play down uh, Frankie, put some Dawns on him, attack in, and then attack with your leader as well. So it's similar to like... Uh, was that Diamond Jozu in White Bit decks, where it's a 2k counter, but you can use it to attack when you need to. And that's great. Then we got Beppo, 3 cost, 5,000 power. And his ability is when attacking, if the number of Dawn cards on your opponent's field is greater than the number of Dawn cards on your field, up to one of your opponent's characters get minus 2,000 power during this turn. So this is decent. It's doing what Red does by giving something minus 2,000 power, but in purple. And even though that it's dependent on like the number of Dawn cards on your opponent's field versus yours, uh, when you're using any red purple law, your Dawn minus in three, you can attack with Beppo, give something minus 2000, and then you can attack into it. So I think this is a playable card. Not sure if people are going to gravitate towards using four times Beppo, um, but it's still a really, really good card to have when you need to. But this might be a tech card in the future as well. Next, we got... Good old Brook. This artwork goes super hard. This is the first time I'm seeing it, by the way. 4 cost, 6,000 power. And on play, if you have 8 or more Dawn on your field, up to 2 of your opponents can get minus 2,000 power during this turn. So it's kind of like uh, a play on the red Brook that, you know, Dawn 1 attack, give 2 things, minus 2,000 power. So this is just another way to go at it. And I think this is going to be a playable card for sure because you can use it to give uh, 2 big characters minus 2,000 power and then use your own characters to attack into it. This is a very, very decent playable card. I feel like it's going to be a tech slot for certain purple tech, certain purple decks moving forward. And it's going to be really, really good. I'm quite impressed uh, by this card. I think that it's going to see some play for sure. Next, we got Miss Double Finger, uh, 4 cost, 4,000 power, but we've counted 2,000. And on play, you can discard one card from your hand uh, and add up to one card from your Dawn deck uh, as rested. Then the trigger is Dawn minus one, and you can play this card. I feel like they're just not giving good cards to Blue Purple uh, Crocodile. Yeah, you can ramp with it, but you got to discard a card from your hand. Most of the time, you're just using it as a 2,000 counter. So besides, if this has a 1,000 counter, it's unplayable, in my opinion. But um, yeah, I mean, you still can, but there are better ramp cards out there. And it, the only reason why you discard one card, because it probably has trigger, that's why you got to kind of balance it out a little bit. It doesn't need that discard clause. And I think then, yeah, Purple Dex would definitely play this. But it's a 2k counter, so if you want to play Purple Yellow Crocodile or Blue Purple Crocodile, you can consider this as part of the list. All right, the next super rare, Eustace Kid. 5 cost, 6,000 power, we've come to 1,000, has blocker, and during your turn, once per turn, when Dawn on your field is returned to the Dawn deck, add up to one Dawn card from the Dawn deck as active. This card is really, really good in essentially like every single purple deck that uses dawn minus effects it's great 
within uh, Eustace kit specifically, um, like the red purple kit, because you can Dawn Miners and then, uh, you know, get it. You can Dawn Miners something and then you can get it back straight away. Even though it's only once per turn, it's still uh, Dawn that you can get back as active. So that's good. You can use this in conjunction with the seven cost Eustace kit super rare from SD10, which works really, really well because you Dawn Miners uh, on play or on attack and give your leader plus 1000 power. And then you can get it back as active with this Eustace kit. So great, great card. Definitely going to be a staple in purple decks moving forward. I love it. Then we've got Mr. One, Mr. Daz Bones. One cost 1000 power with counter 1000. When your opponent attacks once per turn, Dawn minus one, you can uh, bring out a cost three or less card with the Baroque Works trait, I believe, uh, from your hand to the field for free, essentially. Um, yeah, this could be playable. I'm not really sold on the whole purple baroque works archetype purple yellow crocodile just didn't really make a lot of waves but if you want to bring out something for free just by dawn minusing one this could be really good other than that outside of that package it's near unplayable all right now we're going to move on to the purple events and this is the seas against pirates or oh, when you're at sea you face pirates one of the most iconic moments also joku's favorite moment of all uh, time in the One Piece anime slash manga. It's a one cost searcher that says main look at the top three cards of your deck, reveal up to one card with the character streaks uh, with the trait of Straw Hat Pirates, Kid Pirates, or Hard Pirates and add it to your hand and put the rest at the bottom. The trigger ability is to activate this card's main effect. This is a staple 100% because there's just so many things you can look for. Even though it's only the top three cards of your deck, um, you, now you can kind of smoothen out your draws a little bit you can use some stuff from like the straw hat pirates but you want to use like the seven cost kit or the five cost use kit super rare then you will include this card in the deck because you get to search even though it's only three cards it's still a search card great card 100 percent. then we got gamma knife two cost event card with main dawn minus one uh, give something minus, uh, give one of your opponent's characters minus 5000 power during this turn and the trigger ability is add up to one dawn card from your dawn deck as active this is great in Red Purple Law. I believe that Red Purple Law would want to run a certain number of this because this makes it so that you don't really have to round like spend four dawn on a round table because minus 5,000 power is quite substantial. It brings an 8,000 power character to 3,000 power and then you can use Red Purple Law's ability to dawn minus three, return it back to the bottom of the deck and play out something for free. And you can combine this with Otama. You can combine this with so many other cost re power reducing cards in red. This is a great card and you can like stack this. You can two, don minus one, minus 5,000. Two, don minus one, minus another 5,000. So technically, even though you don't minusing two, you're playing a round table essentially. This is a more flexible card because it only uses two dons. Definitely a staple in red purple law moving forward. And then we got Magnetic Genie. I feel like that's another name for this. I'm not sure. I'm sorry for the crude translations, but it's a two cost event card. Main, don minus one, up to one leader or character with your uh, with the characteristics of Kid Pirates, gets plus 5,000 power during this turn. And the trigger ability is, yeah, add one Dawn card from your Dawn deck as active. This is, you know, in combination with the red purple Eustace kit, you can just go for like a tall, big attack, especially in the late game. You get rid of the blockers, your opponent's down to zero life. You want to get in as much damage as possible, similar to, you know, the Fiery Doll plus Zoro and Diable Jambe kind of thing. This could be that in purple. So that's really good. I feel like there's a place for this in the meta game. Definitely going to be a tech card in the future as well. Great card. I love it. And purple has a secret rare in the form of Monkey D. Luffy. It's a 10 cost, 12,000 power. And yeah, on play, Dawn minus 10. Put all your characters other than this Luffy to the bottom of your deck in any order. Then take an additional turn after this one. And then activate main once per turn. You may pay one Dawn. Add, to, uh, add up to one card from your Dawn deck inactive. So this works really well in Red Purple Luffy or Purple Luffy. So that when you Dawn minus 10, you can ramp up again by one. And then you pay one. And then you get the Dawn back. Uh, so essentially you're ramping up. So by the next turn, you are at least four or maybe even five Dawn. Uh, depending if you have other forms of ramp. Uh, but yeah, it's really, really quite good. Uh, yeah, this is this is kind of like a tricky because if you play this when you're too far behind, it's going to be hard to kind of build up a board because you are at zero. Uh, you have to rebuild your dawn first and then you start playing stuff out. But if you are still like even with your opponent and dropping this down, having a 12k beater and being able to attack with it during your additional turn is really powerful. I'm excited to see like the effect of this Luffy kind of making waves in the uh 
in the meta game, but I do feel like you know people are going to gravitate to the five cost use the skate, seven cost use the skate because it's a little bit more mid rangey and you can still be defensive and leave Dawn open. With this, it's just a big beater, and then you gotta hope that your opponent's board isn't too huge that you can face the rough on the crackback after you take your additional turn. Still a great card. Can't wait to get the, uh, can't wait to you know, see the secret rare and the the alternate art in person. So yeah, purple, great. Great card. It's very interesting. Get taking extra turns. Yeah, let's do this. All right, and that's the end of the purple cards. We will go through the black cards in the next video. Um, but yeah, not a lot of purple cards this time. No stages. Uh, but really, really strong super rares. And you know, of course, the Luffy leader is very strong as well. So yeah, I will be opening up a box of OPO five on the twenty sixth of August during release day, and then we're gonna do a live stream on twenty sixth August, the Saturday morning of Singapore time, around eight or nine a.m. So details will be up, it may be in the description or in the future. But hopefully you guys can join me and we can open up the case together and see what we can get. So but until the next time, we're going to talk about the black card snakes. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.